Dear colleagues and opera lovers, welcome to Prelude, a mini interview series with people of the opera by Atelier d'Excellence. Opera is a world stage. It has no borders or passwords. An opera singer has to be a citizen of the world. This means having to live behind your comfort zone. On June 1st, internationally acclaimed conductor Israel Karski will be our guest at the next AD webinar analyzing in detail the strategy for an international career in the United States and Europe. Today we will touch some of these issues with a distinguished artist in both sides of the Atlantic, American mezzo-soprano Jennifer Panara. Welcome Jennifer. Hi. How are you? Good, good to see you Maria. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. I will start with my first question for you. You are currently permanent solist at Theater St. Gallen in Switzerland, yes. and you have previously worked with Stadt Theater Mainz. Uh, although you were an established singer in the United States, you recently made the step to pursue a career in Europe. And I wanted to ask what drove you to this decision? Well, a few different things uh, immediately come to mind. Um, so I have, uh, spoken German for a number of years. I was an exchange student at the University of Cologne years ago. This was even before I really uh, started singing on a full-time or more professional basis in the United States. And um, so during that year abroad, I really fell in love with the German language and with living in Germany. And for many years after that experience, I had that in the back of my mind and I was really hoping that someday I would have the opportunity to live uh, back in Germany again. And the point at which I decided to really get serious about moving my life, uprooting my life from the United States and being in Europe on a more permanent basis, uh, you know, it was years into my freelance career as an opera singer in the United States. Um, for the non-Americans that are listening, um, the, one of the major differences I would say between the markets in Europe and the United States is that most, if not all professional, so non-young artists, but professional singers in the United States are freelance artists. Mm -hmm. So the lifestyle that you have there is very much month to month, gig to gig. And as we all know, it's a very large country. So this could entail you flying from California to Minnesota to Florida in the span of you know three to six months time and um, as exciting as that can sound and as many of the wonderful relationships that I made um, you know some of my best friends are still people that I worked with at the beginning of my career or as a young artist in the states um, I really was interested in pursuing something that would lead to I would say like an overall just a calmer everyday life for me. Um, one of the things that attracted me to the German market in particular were the plethora of guest as well as fest opportunities. So in a more permanent or employee contract like what I was doing in Mainz uh, and what I'm doing now in St. Gallen in Switzerland. Um, the quality of life is just, it's amazing compared to when I, you know, I think back, uh, you know, maybe the first five to seven years of working as a singer, I, I loved travel, but I really was missing having a home, uh, sleeping in the same bed every night, sleeping on my own pillow. <laughs> I have to tell you, it sounds small, but it is one of the best things about my job right now. I go home to my pillow every night. I can uh, understand it. I yeah. can understand it. And you can really feel like you also get to know not only the other singers that you're cast work with when you're working um, in, a, in a job that I have now, but you really get to know everyone that works at the theater, the administration, you get to know the janitorial staff, you get to know all of the backstage crew, um, et cetera. And it's just really lovely because it really feels like you're all part of the fabric of the community of the theater. Um, and then thirdly, I would say one of the major uh, advantages for me to come to the German speaking part of the world uh, to pursue more work was that I am uniquely marketable over here because I not only, you know, have the operatic repertoire that I sing, but because of my ability to speak German, 
And, um, you know, I've spoken it for many, many, many years. I feel very comfortable doing dialogue as well as sung German. Uh, so that means that I'm also marketable for classic musical theater as well as operetta. So not only do I have the chance to sing my favorite operatic roles, Carabino, Ciabelle, et cetera, uh, but also all of those really fun operetta and musical theater roles that I otherwise wouldn't really have the opportunity to do in the United States. It seems an exciting career right now for you. Sarah. Yes, I, I have to say it's, uh, it's, it's in the last year or two, I finally felt like, you know, it, it all comes back to having a home and having a community, but I really feel like a lot of things have fallen into place that way since I've gotten to Europe. And I can see it on your face because I met you a few years ago and now you're really shining this light, <laughs> this success and this uh, nice life that you are living right now. Uh, I have a question which wasn't uh, made from before, but it came out of what you said right now. Do you need an agent both in the United States and in Germany to do a career like yours? That is a good question. Uh, I would say not necessarily. It just, it depends. So mm -hmm. First of all, it depends on the agent or agents you have. Some have uh, a certain wider reach than others. Some are interested only in the United States or the European market, or just very specifically, there are some agents that exclusively work in the German world. Um, and as for my own path, I was actually very fortunate. It was, so actually this was, I think, Maria, the year after we met, <laughs> one or two years after we met, I had just signed with a new agent in the United States. And I had told him at my audition, because we got to chatting a bit, um, you know, he asked me what I envisioned for the next few years for myself. I said, well, actually, it's funny you ask. I have already planned and booked my flight um, to do some European auditions. And I've already written to a bunch of European managers. Um, he is a manager who is open to working with someone in Europe in tandem. Um, I think that's fairly common, actually. But um, at some point, this means you became the agent of yourself for a while. You had yes, to do it. Actually, for that, Very so, important. <laughs> yes, and that is, I, I, I was planning on touching on that later too, when I talk about more specifically what I think young artists or younger singers can do mm -hmm. to prepare for that move, but I'll, I'll mm -hmm. touch on it now. Um, we'll leave it for later. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I, my American agent actually introduced me to my German manager now. And um, they had worked together with other singers uh, in the past. And I was fortunate that I sang for her within a few weeks of coming to Germany. Uh, and then she was able to subsequently set up the auditions for me. And one of them turned into my very first contract, which was a guest contract. Um, Congratulations. I'm you. so glad for you. Uh, can we go to the, first, to the second question? Yeah, sure. So the second question is, what difficulties did you encounter to get your first engagement in Europe? Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where do I start? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would say, obviously, you know, if you, even if you're the kind of person who enjoys traveling and who is excited by the prospect of meeting new people and um, experiencing a different culture, for example, it's still, you can't forget that when you move to another country, just there's so much even in the day to day that is the, the energy of the day-to-day -day that is different than what you're used to. So I would say one challenge I faced is that initially I felt like I was tired all the time and I was really trying to preserve my health and my stamina because obviously, you know, you go over there and you, you have pressure on yourself, you know, self-inflicted uh, pressure to perform to the best of your ability. You want to make that time count. Um, so I really had to do some work and I, I did work um, ahead of time to just kind of mentally prepare myself for that, for the fact that I knew, you know, I was not going to really know much of anyone at first. Um, I did have a few mm -hmm. friends who were based in Berlin already. Um, but other than that, I was pretty much going to be on my own. I wasn't going to be in Berlin the entire time even, you know, I was going to be traveling for auditions and, and, and whatnot. And so you have to prepare yourself for a lot of time on your own and um, dealing with your own emotional uh, difficulties. You know, when you're in a new place, you're tired, maybe, you know, you start to get pessimistic or you start to doubt yourself. And I think that's completely normal. Um, and what I did learn through that audition process was that I am a lot stronger than I gave myself credit for in the past. Um, 
and not just what I was able to, you know, the, the strength I was able to find in myself, but the fact that I'm fortunate that, you know, I, I thought to reach out to other people for help. <laughs> you know, this is very important to know that you're not alone, even if you are physically alone in a new city or in a new country. You can always reach out to your support network at home. You can always, you know, don't be shy about getting friends of friends to connect you with other singers or coaches, for example, in the new area that you're living or, or that you're temporarily based in. Um, anything you can do to give your day at your week structure, I think, is a really smart idea when you're new um, mm -hmm. in a city. Um, and then I would say the other big uh, challenge that I faced were, was a financial challenge. Um, you know, when you are uprooting your life and moving to another country, um, you know, of course, I hoped that I would get work shortly thereafter. And I was fortunate that I did. That is not everyone's story. I was very lucky that that happened to me. I was in the right place at the right time. I was ready for the opportunity that came up and there we go. Um, but I think it's very common for the audition process, whether it's auditioning for managers or for actual jobs, you know, that could take a while. It's, it's a very competitive market. So you have to um, give yourself grace within that period just to know, you know, it's not necessarily that there's something wrong with you if you don't immediately get an agent or if you don't immediately get your first contract. And financially speaking, it's important to, if you can, you know, save up as much money as you can so that you are really ready to move to another country with the expectation that you will not be making any income for at least several months. If you happen to get a job before that, fantastic. But <laughs> so you have you have to give yourself some credit. Yes, absolutely. And I my philosophy on it, you know, I had dreamt of coming to Germany for an audition tour for years. <laughs> but I'm really happy that I waited until it was truly the right season for me. Um, meaning I had my repertoire ready. I was mentally resilient and ready to take on the challenge of this tour. And I had um, actually through a lot of my side jobs in New York City, <laughs> uh, which I think many singers who live there will relate to, uh, you know, I had managed to save up um, some funds so that I was comfortably able to leave that apartment. You know, I broke my lease um, and came to Europe and with the expectation, yeah, that I probably wouldn't have a source of income while I was there, but that I could still, you know, put a roof over my head, feed myself. And not only that, but I could afford to contact people for lessons and coachings and travel to whatever audition opportunities um, came up. You know, you don't want to miss out on something because you rushed into it. And if you had taken more time, uh, maybe you could have saved up more money to afford that additional train ticket or that, uh, that flight. But uh, judging from your experience, I think it's better for a young artist to be based in Germany, for example, or Austria or in German speaking countries in general, if he wants to make auditions in these countries, than to be flying from the United States oh, back absolutely. and forth. This is yeah. killing you. Yes. And, yeah, actually, you recall when we first met, <laughs> it yes. was one of those exceptions to the rule, and I would not recommend doing this. Or at your least singing, your this. singing was exceptional. I, I recall oh, that, and I couldn't understand that you came out of a red eye flight. You oh, were amazing. You. Very yes. jet -lagged. <laughs> I mean it. I mean it. You know that. Thank you so much. That's so kind. <laughs> so, so, Jennifer, what is your advice for young artists considering such a big step? like the one you, you made? Oh boy. Well, uh, as I was just saying, don't rush into it. You know, I think it's very common and I, I still deal with this challenge, um, but certainly as a, a, a singer just out of college or at the very start of my career, it, it was so difficult not to compare myself to others. Okay. It's okay. Um, it was, yeah, it was very difficult to feel like I was just following my own path, had my blinders on, and you know, it was very easy to get distracted by, oh, that person got that role I auditioned for, they must be better than me. Or, oh, I should be further along by now, you know, I should, I should already have had a manager by this age, or wh whatever that is. And mm -hmm. what I will say to those of you who are dealing with that sort of a challenge, try to focus on what you can control, which is, yourself. <laughs> Work as hard as you can. 
with your own core team, a, a, probably a, a voice teacher, a coach or two, um, maybe some very good friends. Maybe there's somebody in the industry that you can get connected with to mentor you a little bit. Um, I think a lot of singers are very generous with their time and sharing and their experiences. And that's certainly something that I was very grateful. You know, I was grateful to be able to reach out to some of the um, singers who are either age-wise a little bit older than me and or just a bit further along in their careers um, who I had either known through uh, one of my previous like, young artist programs or through a friend of a friend and just ask them like, hey, you're working in Europe. What do you think about this? What do you know, do you know about this agency? You know, try to, to reach out to people and you know, a lot of times it can feel like you're asking for a huge favor in doing that. But I will say, as long as you're respectful of someone's time and, you know, you're, you're asking, you're asking, requesting, not, not demanding <laughs> in place, or that they share something with you, most people are going to be generous. Um, with That's them. good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also another bit of advice I would say is before you go, so this is when you're maybe planning your audition tour or planning the move, um, do as much homework, do as much research as you can before you get on the ground in Germany. Um, so that means if you're interested in auditioning for, uh, for management, what I did was I, I did get some advice from some industry professionals to just start a list of management agencies that might be of interest that might match what I am able to offer and what I'm looking for as well. And then I also did just a ton of internet research. You know, I went to these folks' websites. I looked at the singers on their roster, especially the mezzo sopranos, you know, <laughs> to see where they would, were working. Um, you know, maybe if there were recordings, you listen to them and see, okay, um, do I think that I would fit well on this roster aesthetically? Um, it's just very useful to do all of that ahead of time so that when you get there, you don't feel overwhelmed. And also, um, when you do that homework, you know, before your trip, and you, let's say you have your dates booked and you know where you're going to be based, reach out to managers or to um, coaches that you want to work with, teachers, etc. Um, singers you want to have a coffee with and pick their brain, reach out to them ahead of time um, and let them know, you know, I am planning my trip from this date to that date. Um, are you, do you happen to be holding auditions during that time? You know, I've attached my resume for your consideration. Thank you in advance. Just something simple like that. Um, and then also if you do that a couple of months ahead of time, you can even follow up, you know, a month, mm -hmm. weeks before you, you take your flight. Um, I, you know, don't be shy. Of course, you don't want to be pestering anybody, but I don't know about you, Maria. I feel like my instinct is always to, to clam up and to feel self-conscious about. I totally agree that. with you. And so it's I the only way. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of us can just learn by, um, you know, from our more, uh, courageous <laughs> friends and colleagues, you know, just, just reach out to somebody and ask them a question. It doesn't hurt to ask. The worst they can say is no, or maybe not respond, but you really stand nothing, uh, but to lose nothing by reaching out and asking for that help. I agree with you. And I, I agree that the community, the artist community can make a big difference if we all work together in mm -hmm. helping one another. Yeah. And you and I are these kind of people and uh, this is why we met and we became friends yeah. and, <laughs> and I'm very glad that your career is going so well. Thank and, you. Uh, if you have something else to add, I would be very glad to hear it oh, or gosh. make yeah. a wish for the world, for the artist world, I don't know. Uh, let's think, it was something that I didn't cover already. Hmm. Oh, yes, I do have something to say. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> All right, uh, one last bit of, uh, I don't know if it's wisdom, it was something that was shared uh, with me and I'm going to pass it along. I remember when I was still in college and um, some members of the very prestigious young artist program from the nearby A House opera company in the United States came to perform for us and they had an open forum for questions afterwards. And I remember one of the singers, I'm going to get emotional about it, she was so lovely. You could tell in her singing, she just had the biggest heart. She was so warm, so communicative, and she was no different when she was talking to all of us very green, very inexperienced uh, students. And 
I remember she said, you know, when you start to get down on yourself and doubt that there is a place for you in this industry, know that it doesn't take everyone liking your singing and everyone liking who you are to get you hired. All it takes is one person. So if you can believe in yourself and you can cont consistently work to refine your product and to get to the core of what makes you, you, what makes you unique. Um, I'm sure that means what repertoire you sing well, yes. But the more of your own heart and the more of your own personality you're able to show when you walk into a house for an audition, um, you know, you, you will have not only fewer regrets because you will have been yourself and that is truly the best you can do, but you're probably also going to give a more free and a more authentic performance. Um, mm -hmm. And all it takes is for one person in one of those rooms to fall in love with you and your performance for you to get that, that break that you're looking for. So never give up, never stop believing in ourselves, <laughs> never stop pursuing what we love doing. No, because it's not about convincing everyone of your talent, mm -hmm. everyone of your worthiness. You first have to believe in yourself if you expect to walk into a room and present yourself uh, with confidence, but you know, it's, it, you're never going to make everyone happy. So you might as well be true to yourself. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us today and wishing you ever success in your singing dream and in your life. I look forward to seeing you all at our next ADA webinar with conductor Israel Garski on Monday, June 1st. Please note that registration deadline is May 31st. Regarding our discussion today with Jennifer, I would personally say it's worth giving your career this chance because as Sinatra said, if you can make it there, you can make it everywhere. Be well and stay safe.